Hello, in this video we're going to look at setting up cameras for a Tillett & Haig inter-row vision guidance system. This is one of the most important aspects of machine setup as it determines how well the electronic crop row template matches real crop rows in the image. The better the match, the more reliable the tracking. We'll look at two scenarios. First a system for which you already have an appropriate configuration file and for which you want to set the camera to match. And second, we'll consider a situation in which the crop and the camera are set up the way you want them but for which you do not have an equivalent configuration file and need to create one. This requires a basic understanding of the configuration editor. If you're not familiar with the editor, you may wish to consult the manual or look at our tutorial video. Before taking any measurements, always check that the implement is fully lowered and has settled at its normal operating height. Also check that the implement is level and the camera pole is vertical. If necessary, make adjustments with the top link. In this video, we are going to demonstrate the principles of camera setup using this rig with artificial crop complete with artificial weeds. Let's start with that first scenario. We need to check that we have the appropriate file selected. From the working screen, touch the spanner button to get to the setup screen. For this example, we want to work with a configuration file we called 4 row salad. We ensure that it is selected by placing the cursor over it with the arrow key the selected text turns white. We also need to ensure an appropriate crop height is selected. Our demonstration crop consists of flat green lines on the floor, so we will select small. Let's go back to the working screen to see what the template match looks like. Oh dear, it looks like we've got something wrong. The superimposed green lines representing the electronic template do not match the crop lines in the live video image. The crosses representing local template match at different levels down the image are not in a straight line, indicating poor matching. Crosses coloured yellow or red would also indicate a poor match. The image quality bar in the top left is relatively low. It would be a really bad idea to set off in a crop with a setup like this. In this situation, the simplest solution is often to physically change the camera height and angle until the picture looks correct. Let's try that. The crop rows look further apart in the image than the template, so we will move the camera up. Now that's helped. The template match has improved. The blue crosses are better aligned and the image quality bar has gone up. This may work, but it's still not great. The crop rows look further apart than the template at the top of the image, but the other way round at the bottom. Let's try angling the camera up a little. Now, that's much better. We have a good template match a straight line of blue crosses and a high image quality bar. That should work well. Sometimes a simple method just described is not convenient as the machine is not in the field so you have no crop rows to view. In that case it is possible to set the camera by simple measurement according to this diagram showing camera height and a parameter we call look ahead distance. First, we need to go back to the setup screen. Having checked that the correct configuration file and an appropriate crop height are selected, make a note of the camera height and look ahead figures on the screen. Whilst we are here, it is a good idea to check that the spacing between crop rows entered in the configuration file is the same as what you are expecting in the field. Measuring from the ground to the center of the camera, adjust camera height until it matches the figure in the configuration.
Then, measuring forward from directly below the camera, place an object on the ground at the look-ahead distance given in the configuration. You are now ready to adjust the camera. Return to the working screen and touch on the manual button. This freezes a set of green template lines over the live video image along with some blue crosshairs. Adjust the camera angle until the object on the ground is at the center of the blue crosshairs and then tighten the bolts. The camera should now be correctly adjusted. To test that this is the case, we will go back to the working screen and hey presto, we have a correctly aligned template with a line of blue crosses and a high image quality bar. As expected, both methods yielded the same result. In most cases, one of these two methods will be all you need to know. However, our second scenario covers a situation in which you want to use a camera or crop configuration that does not already have an appropriate configuration file. That will require the creation of a new file using a configuration file editor that has been included as part of the system. We will look at that in a moment, but first we need to place the camera to suit crop, implement and tractor geometry. You are trying to view as many rows as possible without getting either the implement or the tractor in the field of view. Given a choice, we would also avoid outer rows that may be disturbed by tractor wheelings or confused by overlap from an adjoining bout. Though this is not always possible and compromises must be made. If your view is very restricted, you might consider using two cameras to increase the number of rows being tracked. However, one camera is normally sufficient. We generally recommend that the camera is looking down at an angle of about 40 degrees to the vertical. However, in some slow emerging drilled crops with relatively sparse foliage, such as leeks and onions, Better results can be obtained in the early crop growth stages with a lower camera height and a more forward looking angle. In this video we will be setting up for a typical configuration with a camera set at about 40 degrees viewing four rows. This looks about correct. So now we need to physically measure three key parameters. Spacing between crop rows, camera height, and look ahead. To measure look ahead, select manual mode from the working screen, which will put blue crosshairs on the screen, place an object on the ground in line with the crosshairs and measure back to a point directly under the camera using the method described a few minutes ago. We now need to enter the configuration file editor. From the working screen, work yourself down through the setup screen to the status and diagnostic screen. The top right button shows a file and pen graphic which denotes the configuration file editor. Pressing that button gets you into the editor, which is a separate program covered in more detail in another tutorial. The rest of this video assumes you're familiar with the configuration editor. Once in the configuration file editor, make a copy of an existing good configuration file and rename it. We will call it 4 row 30 centimeters. We then select the camera and settings page. Enter the camera height and look ahead you measured. Also enter appropriate figures for the number of rows you want to track and the row spacing as required. Exit the configuration file editor and return to the setup screen. Note that on exiting the editor you may be given a warning that the field of view is too narrow to track all of the crop rows. For the system to track a row, approximately half a row width 
must be visible either side of that row. If that condition is not met, you will get a warning. However, it may be that the condition is met at the top of the image, but not at the bottom, in which case the system will automatically track rows as far down the image as possible. If practical, you should raise the camera a little to widen the field of view and maximise the amount of crop being tracked. But if that is not possible, you can ignore the warning. Once out of the configuration editor, select the file you have just created, return to the working screen and you should be ready to go. Yes, that looks good. If your machine has more than one camera, simply repeat these steps for each camera. Whilst multiple cameras on the same machine are normally set up with similar settings, they do not have to be. We hope you found this video useful and remember to look out for our other tutorials. More details about us and our products can be found on our website. Thanks for watching.